Good morning. How are you this morning? I pray all is well with you this morning. I pray you had a good night's sleep, that you're feeling well rested and ready for the world. Happy Sunday. welcoming you to the Sunday Sermon. I'm Valerie Oliver, founding pastor of First Liberty Baptist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We are not your typical Baptist church. We are not your traditional Baptist church. We are all inclusive. We welcome all and listen, I am not your typical pastor. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm the same on Sundays as I am any other day. Amen. I don't I don't pretend to be one way on Sunday and then the rest of the week I'm somebody totally different. Huh? Hallelujah. That's the kind of pastor everybody ought to want, a real pastor, somebody who's real, not somebody that's going to keep secrets and lie to them and look one way on Sunday and then uh, Saturday through, uh, 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 what is it, Monday through Saturday, uh, you're a whole different person behind closed doors. Mm -mm. With me, what you see is what you get. First Liberty uh, Church is all-inclusive. We welcome all. We, we, we want you to know that our doors are open. We want you to feel comfortable, not the building. I mean, we, we are welcoming you. We're still doing online service only. But LGBTQ plus community, you're welcome. Black, white, Asian, Hispanic, wherever you're from, whatever your neighborhood, your last name, how much money you make, we don't care about all of that. We are not concerned about who you love or who you marry. Just come on and worship with us. We are what every church ought to be. Amen. Hey, God bless you, Tyra. Hey, Tyra, rise and Cheryl, good morning. God bless you all. Thank you all for being here with me this morning. Uh, welcome to the Sunday Sermon. I want to remind you that we are in Lenten season, which began on Ash Wednesday, and uh, we're going to be focusing um, these 40 days of, of the season of Lent on our relationship with God. Yes. So you don't want to miss that. We're going to start focusing more on that on uh, next Sunday, uh, actually on Thursday. And so uh, because today is the last day of Black History Month, the last Sunday also of Black History Month. But we do know that Black History is every month. We know that Black History is every day. And American history is black history. This country was built on the backs of slaves. And so, hallelujah, every month is uh, Black History Month. So we're celebrating in February, but we know uh, uh, that that's not where it ends. And so uh, we're going to focus on black history today. And uh, we're reminded that Lenten season goes up until the Thursday before Good Friday. And so we're going to be talking about our relationship and how to look at ourselves and where we are in God uh, uh, during uh, the rest of Lenten season after today. Amen. And so because it's Black History Month, we're going to focus on black people in the Bible today. And this is our last uh, day uh, focusing on black people in the Bible. Uh, we are on part eight, black in Christ, part eight. So we have done eight lessons and sermons on black in Christ, 
black people in the Bible. So if you missed uh, those other parts, go back and watch them. But this is the final uh, part of our series, Black in Christ, part eight. Uh, before we get started, I want to acknowledge any birthdays or anniversaries in the month of February. If you have a birthday or an anniversary in the month of February, we at First Liberty uh, Church want to wish you a happy birthday. We wish you many, many, many more, and we wish you uh, prosperity and blessings overflowing. Thank God for a brand new year for you. <laughs> Another year. You made it through 2020. Hallelujah. And uh, also, if you are celebrating a, an anniversary in the month of February from First Liberty Church, happy anniversary. We wish you many, many more years together. Amen. Or any other special anniversary that you might be celebrating. So God bless you. Happy birthday and happy anniversary from First Liberty Church of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Now, we are going to worship, mm -hmm. and this is a very special song to my heart. Um, we are going to worship this morning with the Black National Anthem. All right? Amen. Yes, indeed. Let's go out celebrating our song, lifting our voices, uh, singing the Black National Anthem Lift every voice and sing. This one rendition is by Alicia Keys. Um, and so we want to watch this. If the technology will act right, we're going to watch this video, uh, our, our national anthem. Amen. The black national anthem. So why don't you worship God, sing it along, lift every voice and sing with Alicia Keys. And I'll be right back to pray. We go to Arrowhead now for Lift Every Voice and Sing as it's played in the stadium. At the dawn of the 20th century, America was a country full of promise and hope for many. Black Americans faced a different reality, a nation separate and unequal. Yet their hope persisted. Pained by inequality, but inspired by resilience, writer and civil rights activist James Weldon Johnson put pen to paper. His words would become a unifying call, a hope for a brighter tomorrow, a timeless exhortation to lift every voice and sing. Lift every voice and sing to
are forces that want to take us back to another place. We don't want to go back. We want to go forward. Amen. Amen. We don't want to go back. We want to go forward. Those are the wisdom words of our beloved John Lewis. Amen. Who went on to be with the Lord. And uh, listen here, we're going to keep our hearts on moving forward. Amen. We're going to continue to sing. We're going to continue to march. We're going to keep on until victory is won. Amen. We're on our way. I believe that in my heart. We've been on our way for over 400 years, but we're really going to see some stuff happening this time. I just believe that in my spirit. Let us keep on. Don't let down now. Let's keep on going until victory is won. Amen. Good morning, Marcia. Bless you, my sis. Carolyn, bless your heart. God bless. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for being here. You bless my heart. Listen, we are going to pray whatever is on your heart this morning, whatever is challenging you, whatever is burdening you, whatever is causing you fear, anxiety, or any other uh, discomfort in your heart. Hmm. Know that the Lord knows all about it. And the Lord not only knows about it, the Lord is the only one who can do something about it. Hallelujah. And so, y'all, let's lift our hearts to the Lord. The song said, lift our voices, but let's lift our hearts now. The Lord has opened the door for us to come in and, and, and enter into the Lord's presence and make our requests known unto the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God in heaven, we thank you so much. Thank you for these who have come to join us. Thank you for these who have come to hear a word from you. Lord, bless every family represented here in the Facebook family, in the YouTube family, and others who may listen somewhere elsewhere. Lord, we thank you for them. We ask that you would bless them with every blessing they stand in need of. Bless their families and keep protection over them. Watch over them, Lord, as we travel through this barren land. A land dangerous, full of scorpions and snakes and, and people who are evil and all kinds of evil darts from the wicked one. Lord, we realize that you are the one and only true and living God. And besides you, there is none other. We come to you this morning, Lord, thanking you for being so good to us. Thank you for the many blessings that you so graciously bestowed upon us. You didn't have to do it, Lord, but you did it out of the goodness of your heart, out of the abundance of love you have for us. You did it anyway, in spite of our shortcomings and in spite of our flaws, Lord. You still blessed us. Even those who don't acknowledge you, Lord, you still woke them up this morning. You still put food on their tables, Lord. And we pray one day, someday, they will acknowledge you and come to a relationship with you through Jesus Christ. Lord, no matter what the situation may be this morning, those who are praying right now, Lord, we ask that you would lift up their concerns. We pray that you would intervene, that you would take care of every need. You said it in your word that you would supply all of our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, we look to you for our help. Where does our help come from? It comes from you. Lord, there is nowhere else for us to turn. There is nowhere else for us to go. And so we look to you, Lord. 
We ask your blessings upon those who are sick this morning, those who aren't feeling well, those who uh, just got a bad report from the doctor yesterday, those who just found out that their COVID-19 test is positive. Lord, those who are in the hospitals, those who are suffering with various diseases and illnesses, Lord, you said that you are the God who healeth me. Hallelujah. You said, Lord, that you would heal us. And we know that sometimes it's not the way we would like it to be. But you still heal us. You bring us on home to be with you where we are completely healed and whole. Or you leave us in the earth for a little while longer where we are able to function and move and live and have our being in you still healed. We thank you, Lord. In your wisdom, your infinite wisdom, we know that we can trust in you whatever you do and however you do it. And Lord, whatever the problem might be this morning, it might be a financial problem, a lack of money, no, no food on the table. Lord, they're still having issues with water in, in Texas, Lord, and, and they're still having issues all over the world with the pandemic and, 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 and racial inequalities, Lord. We, we still need you to step in and help us today. Hallelujah. Lord, we look to you for mending our broken hearts. Those of us who have been hurt deeply, those of us who have maybe perhaps lost a loved one this past week, Lord, every day somebody is leaving this earth. But we know, Lord, that you are the God of all comfort. We ask that you would comfort them as only you can. We ask, Lord, that you would give peace where there is no peace. Peace that passes all of human understanding. Give joy where there is sadness. Lord, give strength where there is weakness. Oh God, we need you. Like our elders would say, we can't get along without you. Thank you that we can trust and depend on you. We might not understand everything, but we know that we can trust in you. We don't have to understand it. We know that you got it. And so we're going to keep our hands in your hands, and we'll make it. We'll make it. Thank you. And now as we approach your word, Lord, let us approach it carefully. I must decrease, and you increase. Open our hearts of understanding. Open our, our ears so that we can hear in the spirit what it is you have for us today. So, Lord, in all of these and other blessings, we give you glory. Always. And it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 God is a prayer hearing God and a prayer answering God. Amen. Listen here, beloved. This is the last uh, session on our series, Black in Christ, Part 8. Listen, is Christianity for black people uh, or black people in the Bible? Is Jesus for black people? Well, listen here. I found something in the scriptures, beloved, that I want you to pay attention to. I want you to do your own research and your own studying on this, but I, I found it quite interesting that Noah had a black son named Ham. You've all heard of Ham, and Ham was given a bad rap because there are those who would say that the black race is cursed because of Ham. Now, if you go back and read in Genesis what Ham did, uh, we would think that God cursed Ham because of what Ham did when his father Noah got drunk. 
Uh -huh. Come on here. Listen, there are people in the Bible who got drunk. There are people who lied. There are people who committed adultery. There are people uh, who did all kinds of terrible things, but God still used them, beloved. Uh, we don't care about your mistakes. Whatever you did, Lord knows it, and the Lord forgives. Okay, and the Lord forgets all about it, beloved. So here's Noah who had too much to drink. Noah drank too much. And one of his sons, Ham, uh, 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 did something terrible, uh, the scriptures tell us. And so uh, it is believed that Ham, uh, representing the black race, was cursed. I stopped by to tell you this morning that that's a lie. That's not the truth at all. Let me tell you about Ham. Ham uh, uh, had sons of his own, uh -huh. and one of them was named Cush. Mm. We've been hearing about Cush a lot lately uh, 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 over there in uh, Ethiopia. Mm, that's Cush in Africa. And Cush was an ancestor of uh, a son named Nimrod. Now, Nimrod might have been his great-grandson or his great-great-grandson or great-great-great-great-grandson. But, but Nimrod was a descendant of Cush, a brother. Uh huh. And now this was after the flood, okay? Remember the great flood and everybody got on the ark. They had laughed at Noah while Noah was building the ark. They made jokes and they made fun of him, but Noah knew he had heard from the Lord. And Noah built that ark. He just kept on building. Beloved, you just keep on building. Keep on building your life. Whatever the people say don't matter. People are going to talk about you. People are going to talk down to you. People are going to laugh at you and, and, and say negative things to you and try to talk you out of your dreams. But don't pay any attention to them. Listen to what the Lord says. Noah kept on building that ark and saved his family. And we're here today because Noah built that ark. Woo! And so listen here. Uh, there was a great flood. And beloved, after the flood, uh, Noah's family was saved and they spread from their nations throughout the world as the world was at that time. Now, they considered it great, but to us, it wasn't great. It would be some little small areas, you know, uh, that we would consider not much of. But to them, it was the world. It, it was great to them. And so uh, Noah's sons and Noah's family got off the ark with, with their wives and everything and all the animals and all that, and they spread from their nations throughout the world as it was. Now, our text begins in Genesis, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Now, this is just a little bit of a backdrop. Our, our text that I'm really going to focus on is uh, verses 5 through 8. Mm. Just stick with me for a moment. I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a backdrop. Genesis, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 9. And now, what happened here was, uh, Cush, as you know, was a black man. Uh huh. From from Ham, uh, and, and and was a descendant of Noah. Now the people uh, of the world at that time, as it was, was of one language, a common speech. The word tells us. And as they moved eastward on toward Mesopotamia, over in that area, and in, in Babylonia. They found a plain in Shinar, and that's Babylon. That's Babylonia. And they settled there. Talking about Noah's son, Cush, uh -huh, and, and Ham. And, and chapter 10 tells us, before the chapter they were in now, that Nimrod, uh -huh, uh, Cush's uh, grandson, a uh, great grandson, who was of the black tribe of the clan of Noah were the ones who settled in Babylonia. I'm going somewhere. Nimrod established the first kingdom in the earth, a black tribe. The word of God even tells us that Egypt was often referred to as the land of Ham. So Nimrod, being a descendant of Ham, here he is now in Babylonia. 
And in verse 4, it tells us that they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city. Talking about the, the Tower of, of Babel. Mm -hmm. You heard of the Tower of Babel, haven't you? So, so they said, now this is the black clad from Noah. Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, which, which really meant with great height. Not actually going to the heavens, but it was great, great, great. Like our skyscrapers, maybe, you know, our, our Empire State buildings, you know. Uh, and so uh, they went on and said, so that we may make a name for ourselves. Want to make a name for themselves. Otherwise, we'll be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Now, it appears they did not want immigration. Immigration with an E. The difference between immigration with the E and immigration with the I is that the word immigration with the I simply means that uh, people will leave their native country and move into another country. That, that's, that's all it is. And immigration with the E is uh, uh, that they would move out of or exit their native country and go to another. That's all. That's all. Same thing. It's just one means entering in and the other means exiting. So uh, they wanted to build a city with a great tower uh -huh, to keep uh, themselves there where they were and, and, and refuse to immigrate with an E to, 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 to uh, you know, allow people to leave the clan and move out. Now, the problem with that, beloved, is that this was disobedience to God because the Lord had told them after the flood, remember, to replenish the earth. I'm going somewhere. He told them to replenish the earth, but they wanted to remain in this fertile land they had found it which was watered by the Euphrates and the Tigris rivers, which flowed out of Egypt. And they wanted to stay there and make a name for themselves. They didn't want to uh, go abroad. They didn't want to uh, migrate or uh, uh, be immigrated. They didn't want to mingle with others and, and spread out uh, or allow members of their tribe to leave and go to another country. They wanted to be selfish. Well, all mankind has a problem with selfishness. <laughs> not just the black race, you see. And so this was not pleasing unto the Lord. Now, this brings us to our text, verses 5 through 8, Genesis, the 11th chapter. But the Lord, listen to this, came down to see this city. They were building this city, this, 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 this tower uh, 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 in, in Babel, the Tower of Babel, which was Babylon. It's called the Tower of Babel because of the languages, you see. Uh, that God was going get, getting ready to disturb because remember there were only one one language at first one language huh one language one people one language and so the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building now the Lord didn't literally come down from heaven to see the city uh it's just a, a matter of words describing something we can understand meaning that the lord began to give close attention to what was going on in babylonia and to see what they were doing so the lord started paying attention beloved the lord is paying attention to what we do and what we say. The Lord is paying attention to how we treat one another. There are people walking around today who think that God is not paying attention to what they're doing. They think that they're getting away with this and getting away with that. And beloved, let me tell you, they are not. The Lord does pay attention to what we do and we will be held accountable 
but the things we say and the things we do and how we treat one another. The Lord went down, so to speak, started paying attention to what they were doing in the city. And the Lord said, if as one people, this one black clan here, you know, the descendants of, of, of Ham and Cush, uh -huh, the black folk, as if one people speaking the same language, if they have begun to do this, to build this city, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Now the Lord is saying this would have worked. This would have worked. But God didn't want this to work for them at that particular time, beloved, because the Lord had other plans for them. The Lord does want us to prosper and do well, but at that time, the Lord had other plans. See, we got to do things when the Lord wants us to do it. Not just do it when we get ready to do it, but when the Lord says so. It's not that the Lord doesn't want you to have a particular job or a particular house or a particular car. It just might not be time, beloved. The Lord wants to bless you, but it's got to be in God's timing. And so God was saying to them, this could have really worked. You know, y'all getting together and you want to build your city and keep yourselves all gathered together and be selfish and not go out and replenish the earth. This could have worked. That's what the Lord said. He said in verse 6, he said, if they can do this, then nothing they planned to do will be impossible for them. You know why? Because they were sticking together. They were of one language, uh -huh, of one clan. And the Lord said, this could have worked. Beloved, if we stick together, that's what was, this is telling me, great things can happen. Even the Lord admitted it. He said if we would just stick together with one another and not against one another, our plans would work, but we got to be on one accord. We got to work together and not against each other. The Lord said nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them because they were of one language and they were all in agreement. And they were together on this deal. And the Lord was saying, wait a minute, I got to do something. It's not time for that. I got to stop this. This would have worked. Our togetherness works, beloved. See, we got to stick together. See, as black and brown people in America, we got to support one another and love one another in doing good. What I mean by that is we do well at sticking together for a lot of wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. See, no snitching, you know, uh, when, when crimes are committed. Well, we're great at that. Nobody didn't know nothing, you know. Uh, and, and we're great at that, you know, but we, we won't seem to stand up for each other in positive, constructive, and productive actions. We stick together for the wrong reasons. You see, we stick together, you know, in, in crime, ride or die, partners in crime, you know, and, and doing the wrong things. I know we trying to survive. I know I understand that. But if you got a relationship with the Lord, guess what? The Lord is going to open doors for you. You ain't got to do all of that fraud and killing and all this and drugs and drug dealing and all. All you're doing is killing your own people. See, that's all they doing out there on the streets, all this killing, all this shooting. We're killing one another. You see, you see, but we ought to stick together. You see, and won't nobody say nothing. Every time we, we turn around, you know, or something happened and somebody right there, or uh, next door, police said, well, can you tell us so we can stop this, so we can know what's going on? I didn't see nothing. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing. I don't got nothing to say about that. Believe me. I ain't saying nothing about that. I'm just saying that's what people do. 
That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but 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 while it was happening, you know, they were peeping all out the window, all upside down, trying to see what happened. They saw the whole thing. But uh, but when they try to get, get some answers so that this foolishness could stop, my I, I was sleep. <laughs> so beloved, you know, we stick together for the wrong reason. But but beloved, if we would stick together for good things. For the right reason, don't you know how many great accomplishments we can make? Don't you know that we can build a city? We can build our own Wall Street like our ancestors had. And the white folk, the haters, burned it to the ground. We had built our own little town. We had a, 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 a Wall Street, a black Wall Street. Yes. That's what can happen when we stick together. Black businesses and banks and all kind of stuff. Yeah, beloved, we gotta stick together. You see, for the right reasons. And then the Lord said, come on, let us go down and confuse their language. Cause see, they were being disobedient. The Lord told them, wanted to go on and replenish the earth. No, they wanted to stay there and build a city, you know, for themselves and just stay right there. And so the Lord said, okay, come on, let's go down. We gotta do something. And so the Lord went down again, intervening from heaven and confused their language so they will not understand each other. Hmm. Now, they're going from having one language to different languages or different tongues. The King James Version might say tongues. So now they're going to have different languages. See, they were being disobedient, so the Lord had to step in. And the Lord, verse 8, scattered them, something they didn't even want to do. See, they, see what they did, being disobedient, defeated the purpose. And so now the Lord has scattered them. I'm, I'm getting to a point here now. The Lord scattered them from there all over the earth. And they stopped building the city. The Lord put a stop to it. And beloved, it, it, this is why our plans fail oftentimes. Because first of all, we don't consult the God, uh, God many times. We don't, we don't consult with the Lord. And then secondly, it's not something the Lord wants us to do at that time, as I mentioned earlier. So the Lord scattered them from there in Babylonia all over the earth. Now, all over the earth back then was nowhere near what it is now. It was a smaller region, a smaller area, but it was great to them. And so all over the earth now, here are the descendants of Ham, black people, being scattered by God, languages being changed, and being spread out all over the world as it was at that time. And this was the very thing they didn't want to happen. But it happened because they were disobeying the Lord. See? And so, beloved, that's why it's called the Tower of Babel, because there the Lord confused the language. You know, uh, uh, Babel is, a, is, is a similar to a Greek word meaning language. And so from there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. There was no curse on Ham or Cush. There was no curse on Ham. There was no curse on Cush. God said, cursed be Canaan. Now, Cush, uh, 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 Ham did do something that was really kind of disgusting, you know, as I understand it. But the curse wasn't on Ham. It was on Canaan. And we saw that when the Lord gave the rich and fertile land of Canaan to the Israelites, that was part of the, the curse. The Lord sent the Israelites over there and said, I'm going to give you a land flowing with milk and honey over there to the land of the Canaanites. Go over there and take it. And that was part of the curse, if not the curse itself. 
And, 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 and God took the land from the Canaanites and gave it to the Israelites. See? Now, that's, beloved, so that tells us that, that Ham was not cursed. The black race is not cursed because of what Ham did. The race is, a black race is not cursed. Listen, let me drive home my point. This is what I want to show you, beloved. The world evolved, the world as it is today, evolved from the world as it was back then. Evolved from the tribes of Noah, and particularly at Babylonia out of the tribe of Ham, the black son where they tried to build the Tower of Babel. God scattered them and changed their languages, and now you have all these different languages and nationalities. Started from Babel uh, in Babylonia, uh, from the descendants of Ham. So if Ham was cursed, why did God use them to accomplish the Lord's purpose in replenishing the earth after the flood. And they were cursed. Ham used black blood all over. That, that tells me everybody got black blood. That tells me that every language, every nationality in this earth has black blood. See, this tells me that many other languages and nations evolved from Ham's tribe. The black man, the black tribe, they were the ones at the Babylonia, uh, 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 in Babylonia, building the tower. And the Lord scattered them all over the world. And they've been evolving ever since the different languages and nationality came out of the black tribe. Now, somebody will say, and I'm almost done, beloved. I'm telling you, I'm almost done. Somebody will say Noah's other sons, Shem and Japheth. They will say, well, they were of other races. So perhaps there were other nationalities that came out of Japheth and Shem. See, these were Ham's brothers. Noah had three sons. Shem, Ham and Japheth. So some will say, well, what about Shem and Japheth? They, they were different nationalities. They were not black. And they may have taken part in replenishing the earth. But, beloved, there is a but. When you think about this, and you think about Noah, Noah came from Adam and Eve. You know, Adam and Eve had children, Cain and Abel, and then on and on and on and on down the line of genealogy, there came Noah. Now, the Garden of Eden is believed to be, if you would study, you might find that the Garden of Eden is located and was located at that time in Ethiopia, Africa. And... I hear tell of some research that was done. I mentioned this before during this month. I hear tell that Eve's bones were located. Some archaeologists, not Christians, archaeologists, scientists, found Eve's bones over there in Ethiopia, in Africa, and said she was a black woman. My point is, if Shem and Japheth, Noah's other two sons, were not black, they still came from Noah, who came from black a black race, Adam and Eve. If you have a small percentage of black blood in you, beloved, you are considered black. You might not look it but you are considered black. You know how our, uh, um, some of our children who are biracial, you know, uh, they might be light-skinned and might have a different texture hair, the mom is white, the dad is black, or vice versa. 
uh, but they look somewhere in the middle. You can tell that, that they are biracial. And, and, and nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But what I'm saying, beloved, if Noah came out of Adam and Eve, then Noah had some black blood in him. And if Noah had black blood in him, so did Shem and Japheth. Not just Ham. Ham was just the dark-skinned one. <laughs> Woo! Beloved, all I'm saying is, listen here. From what I'm getting out of all of this, everybody came out of us. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you what I see. I'm just telling you what I studied. I'm just telling you what I feel like. Uh, the Lord is saying to us this morning, everybody, every language, now that's not to say we're better than anybody, you know, I, I mean, I'm not saying that we ought to turn our noses up and be arrogant, you know, and look down on others, but I am saying that uh, it looks to me that other nations and languages came out of the black race. The Lord said, after the flood, go and replenish the earth. And here we are, replenish all of these nationalities, all of these races, all of these different languages and tongues. And they came out of one language. They evolved from one race. And they were black, Adam and Eve. Then Noah, Noah's sons. Ham was just the one that was dark-skinned. If you, if you let me tell it in my understanding, in my study, Shem and Japheth had black blood. They were black too. They might not have appeared to be uh, when you look at their skin. So everybody's black. <laughs> and you got some people that ain't gonna believe that, don't wanna believe that, no indeed not. Because white supremacists believe that they are pure the purest human being on the earth. And ain't nobody able to live up to who they are as human beings and their DNA. But they forgot all about the fact that there's been some research and they're forgetting about the fact that any little percentage of black blood means you black. Oh, I think they would fall out and die if they knew they had black blood. They, won't, they don't want to believe that. They don't want to believe that. So all I'm saying today, beloved, on this last day of Black History Month, not Black History because we, we every month is Black History, but the last day of Black History Month is that everybody evolved from the black race. Now that's my understanding. You go and you study yourself. You see what you find out. But I'm telling you, uh, black uh, Adam and Eve, uh, Eve's bones showed that she was a black woman. And it Noah kept on down the line. Black blood. But look, that's all I stopped by to you today. Black blood, human race, black. Not race, this race, that race, this ethnicity, that nationality. Talking about the human race, black. <laughs> Beloved, uh, I've been trying to answer the question this month. Is Christianity for black people? Is the Bible for black people? Is Jesus for black people? Well, we're in the Bible. God scattered us from the tower at Babel, Ham, Ham's uh, our descendants, Cush and Nimrod and them got together and decided they were going to build a city and not do what God said they were going to do. And then if you want to talk about Shem and Japheth, they came out of Noah uh, and Noah came out of Adam and Eve. That's it. Facts, Marshall. Facts. And, 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 and that's all I'm saying. <laughs> so, beloved, you leave this month of February knowing that you ain't the trash that people try to call you. That you ain't the low down dirty nobody that people try to call you. 
No matter what street you grew up on, no matter what project you came out of or what neighborhood or ghetto you came out of, God saw fit to bring you to this earth and to create out of you other nations. Woo! You missed the opportunity to shout right there. Black blood is some kind of blood, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm happy about it. Don't tell me I ain't nobody. Don't tell me that I'm not 100% human. You know, they got religions right now that will tell you black people ain't 100% ain't human. But listen here, beloved, there ain't nobody but the devil trying to make us uh, 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 feel bad and, 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 and to make us feel less than and worthless. That's all, because the devil knows who we are. The devil knows. See, the devil knows the Bible backwards. The devil knows the word of God. See, the devil knows who we are. That's why he always coming against us. That's why we always been mistreated. I believe that in my heart. Because we were God's first to come to this earth. And God loves us. He loves the black race. We are not cursed. God loves the black race and anything and anybody God loves, Satan hates. Because God uh, 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 is, is God and Satan hates God. So anything and anybody God loves, Satan hates. Ooh. I just want you to leave out of here shouting this morning. Apparently the Lord felt the same way. He put it in my spirit. Leave Black History Month, but don't leave Black History. See, everybody you look at came out of you. I'm telling you what I, what I see now. Beloved. Woo, hallelujah. But you let nobody put you down. Black woman, black man, black child, black LGBTQ plus community. I love every other race. I love every other ethnicity, every other ethnic group. I love them. I love y'all. I'm telling you. I, but this is Black History Month. And we're talking about black and brown people this month. Black LGBTQ plus lives matter too. Black women, your life matters. Black men, your lives matter. Black children, your lives matter. God didn't uh, 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 develop and, 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 and maintain and, and, and give, give rise to the Black Lives Matter movement for nothing. Trying to let everybody know. Y'all just don't know. Y'all don't know who you messing with. Black lives matter. Or black, black lives matter. You don't know who you messing with. But you got some that feel so insufficient. And so that's what it's all about. If they are fearful, they feel insufficient. They know who we are. Many of them do. But they want to make it out to be a lie and call themselves supremacists. You see that statue they built of 45? Did you see that? Idol worship. I ain't going into that. Idol worship. They've gone so far as to worship idols. Idol worship. That's idolatry. Nations were destroyed because of that. God does not take well to idol worship. But they're trying to build something. They first they made a white Jesus. Try to get us to bow down to them, making Jesus look white. And now they got a statue of a white man now. I'm telling you, God has come down. And, and, and God is watching. God is watching. Don't you worry about that, beloved. Don't worry about that at all. Know who you are. We already saying that. Know your word. Know your word. And so you leave this month feeling good about who you are and where you're from and whose you are, who you belong to. We're in the Bible. God loves us. 
loves our black skin. Is Christianity in the, uh, uh, for black people? Yes. Is the Bible for black people? Yes. When we interpret it correctly. Is Jesus for black people? Yes. As long as we don't try to make him look white with blonde hair and blue eyes. You leave Black History Month with a good heart and, and, and feeling empowered to stick together with one another and do what we got to do to keep this movement going, to keep the dream alive, to keep on moving because black lives matter. Black lives matter to God. And beloved, I'm telling you, if God is for you, nobody can be against you. Amen. You leave February, but don't leave black history. Black history is everything. Amen. God bless you, beloved. I hope that this message has uh, in in inspired you and encouraged you. Uh, I, I pray that you have received what it is the Lord wanted you to get this morning. I don't know what portions of the sermon, what parts of, of whatever that God wanted you to see, but I know that the Holy Spirit knows. And I know and I trust that the Holy Spirit has given this word to you as the Lord uh, sees fit. And so God bless you this morning. And now I don't want to leave uh, this live uh, without first, uh, beloved, inviting you to Christ. On this last day of Black History Month, we want to extend to you the invitation to Christ. If you have never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is your time. Not the blue-haired, blue-eyed, blonde-haired Christ, but the Christ who is about justice and equality for all even the LGBTQ plus community. I'm talking about the Christ who loves the gay people, the Christ who loves black women and black children and black men. I'm talking about the Christ who died for all of us and not just some. The God who talks about us in the scriptures talks about us good in the scriptures. We're not cursed. So that's what I'm talking about. People getting up there uh, trying to preach and don't know how to interpret scripture. Misleading people. But beloved Jesus wants you to know that your life, like the, like, like the young people say, is worth something. Amen. Know your word. Come to Jesus. Lord, I love you. I, 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 I don't know what my purpose is. Just talk to the Lord. They say you died for me. Tell me about that. God will talk to you in your spirit, I'm telling you. God will answer the questions you have. But you got to be listening and seeking. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek the Lord and receive Christ. Today, yesterday is gone and not coming back, and tomorrow is not promised. Today, receive Christ. Come on. Jesus loves you. The Lord has a plan for your life. You have a purpose in this world. But only the Lord knows what it is. And so the Lord welcomes you. And beloved, if you receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, let us know. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. And when we get back to the church house, you ought to stop by the church sometime. Come on and worship with us. We'll let you know 
uh, where we are and all of that when we get ready to get back. Uh, but stay online with us uh, and worship with us online, beloved. Let us know uh, if you receive Christ. And if you don't, that's all right. That's the best decision you can ever make in your entire life. Amen. So I'm going to look for you Thursday. It'll be March. Woo! March 2021 already. So on March 4th, that's supposed to be a day when Trump's supposed to become president again out here. Have you heard that? March 4th. You look at the news. Look at CNN. Uh, it's a trusted source. It's a trusted news source. It is. You know, some people call it fake news, but but it, it, it's a trusted source of news. Trusted information. Uh, yeah. Say that on March 4th. Trump's supposed to become president again. <laughs> I don't know what they got planned or what's going on, but y'all, let's pray. We're still in the midst of spiritual warfare. Still. There's a fight for freedom. They don't want to let us go. That's the devil. We got to pray. The only thing that 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 crashes spiritual warfare uh, and, and gives us the victory is the power of prayer. And the word of God, praying the word. Amen. So Thursday is the fourth. <laughs> That's how I got on that. So I'll see you Thursday for our um, weekly Real Talk Inspiration, 7 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Hope to see you there. Happy Black History Month. Hope you have enjoyed the series. I hope you have been enlightened. And uh, we're going to move on uh, while we are in Lenten season and uh, see what the Lord would have us to do. Amen. God bless you, Carolyn, Tyra, Marsha, uh, Roz, and Cheryl. Those of you that I can't see, uh, God bless you. I love you so much. Thank you for being with me this morning. I love you from the very bottom of my heart. My, my Facebook family, YouTube family, thank you so much. I will see you all next time. You be blessed and know that if God is for you, no one can be against you. Black lives matter. See you next time.